Welcome back, Canonites. E3 is here, and with it came an amazing trailer for Halo Wars 2. There's a ton of interesting info hidden within, so let's break it down. To start, as I've been saying, the game is set post-Halo 5. The Spirit of Fire finds themselves at the Ark through means unknown and thrown into a battle with a new Covenant faction. As we start in on the trailer, we see a ton of destruction and soon find who we'll later find out is Captain Cutter walking through the battlefield. Old UNSC logo on his shoulder, but with a new design for the Covenant era officer's uniform. Marines run past him, preparing for an attack. If we look at the Marines, we can see that they aren't wearing the armor from Halo Wars 1, but rather the armor design from Halo 2 Anniversary. I personally would have rather seen the old classic HW look, but at least they aren't suddenly wearing post-war gear. We can also see that they are dirty as hell. They've been fighting for a while, it would seem. As they begin their attack, a brute comes smashing through a wall and we get our first up-close look at this new armor. Red, as I've been saying since the leaks, and significantly cleaner than the UNSC's armor. Overall, from what we see, I love this new brute design. And from what we've seen of the multiplayer, this is most likely what's called a brute warlord, a hero unit. The next shot also gives us a look at the gravity hammer, which looks... way too thin, in my opinion. Maybe I'm alone, but does this bother anyone else? Moving forward, we get our first look at Cutter, and boy, the years have actually been pretty wonderful to him. In fact, he looks younger than he did in Halo Wars 1. Seriously, look at these pictures side by side. I was talking with fellow YouTuber Hidden Xperia about this, and we came to the only logical conclusion, the Ark contains the Fountain of Youth. In all seriousness, though, I'm not a fan of this new look. I mean, it's still Blur making these, so why change the face? Yeah, Cutter's voice actor changed, but I think they could have made it work. Miranda's voice actor changed between Halo 2 and 3, and they made that work. Same with Truth, and they were able to keep the original look intact. What's really funny is that this character sheet shows an early version of him that looks much closer to the classic Cutter look. Sadly, it's probably too late to change it. In our next scene, we can see the Warthog, which is the 2554 model from Halo 4 and 5. As we did see that model in Halo 2 Anniversary, one could take it to mean that 343 meant to retcon this model into service prior to 2554. Personally, it doesn't bother me all that much. After the Hog takes out one Brute Warlord and runs another over, we get our first look at a new unit known as the Blisterback, a mobile anti-air vehicle. After it fires, we get our first full look at the new chieftain known as Atriox. According to Dan Ayub, Atriox leads a faction called the Banished, which actually fought against the Covenant before the Great Schism. So, now we know what the Banished refers to, a banishment from the Covenant. Still, I gotta wonder where they got all this tech that we see. I'm sure we'll find out in the final game. Interestingly, an interview with Frank O'Connor and Kevin Grace, posted by GameStop, claims that the Banished have actually been referenced in past Halo media. This initially left me scratching my head, but then I remembered this scene from Halo Wars 1. The war with the humans will require a great deal many more machines than we can currently muster. I will take what we have. And leave us defenseless? No. The question for a long time has been, defenseless from what? Many in the lore community have theorized for years that the Covenant was actually fighting on two fronts during the war, and thinking that this line might have referred to another threat, perhaps a species that didn't want to join the Covenant that they were fighting. However, I think we now found what Regret feared. The Banished. Only time will tell if this is true or not. Getting back to Atriox, if we look at his armor, we can see it looks like it was, at least partially, scavenged from fallen enemies. Notably, you can see an ODST chestplate with the old UNSC logo on it. And while we're here, let's talk about Atriox's arm. When he was first revealed, many theorized that it was a mechanical arm. Looking at this still, to me, it looks just heavily armored, not artificial. Moving forward, we jump over to Cutter, and we get our first look at the Cyclops, and boy do they look amazing! Unless 343 and CA are planning to retcon the classic design, I think we can assume that this is a new model of Cyclops. And, as many have pointed out, these have been converted into at least partial combat units, sporting guns on the right arms. Since we are on the Ark, and there is a known UNSC presence, or there was at one point at least, I have to wonder if maybe some of the upgrades we see, and perhaps the new vehicles, are gained either directly from local UNSC outposts, or scavenged from these outposts. Next up, we have what is probably the coolest scene in the entire trailer, Cutter summoning ODST pods to drop right onto the blister backs. So impractical, but so damn cool. The ODST pods pop open, and we can see that Halo Wars 2 is using the H2A model. In fact, if it wasn't clear by now, a lot of designs from H2A are being recycled. A good way to save on time and money, I imagine. I've also had a theory for a long time that the armor we saw in Halo 2 Anniversary was an older model BDU. The stuff we see in Halo 3, ODST, and Reach are said to be born from developments provided by Project Mjolnir, 
which is why some ODST armor pieces are available to Spartans. To see these designs here would seem to support my theory. Next up, we get a good look at Red Team, and yes, Douglas is among them. Douglas is not dead. He's not. All of Red Team are sporting the classic Mark IV armor, but looking closely, we can see that there are some minor differences, most likely due to a slight change in art direction. However, on the Halo Wars 2 menu screen, there's an image of a Spartan with a strange-looking version of Mark VI. It almost looks like a mix between the Halo 2 Anniversary campaign version and multiplayer version, but the helmet has the same facial vents as the Mark IV. Weird. So, maybe Red Team is wearing an updated version of Mark IV rather than their traditional armor. As the trailer comes to an end, Cutter and Atriox face off, and we get a wide shot of the battlefield. We can see a number of now-familiar units, but we also have Sangheili in the mix, wearing Halo 2 Anniversary-style armor and wielding the Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer sword. As we zoom out, a Cyclops is holding up a brute like a badass, and in the background we can see the brute Scarab. Zooming out further, we can see a Spartan hijacking a brute Banshee. Though it's impossible to tell which one, I'm personally thinking this is Jerome. He's actually named in the campaign B-roll footage I posted earlier today, and he's a hero unit in the beta. But who knows, it could be any one of them. In the final scene, we can see that the battle is taking place among the wreckage of an assault carrier. Whether this was shot down during Halo 3, or felled in a different battle is unknown, but I'd like to think the former. And finally, in the background, we can see one of the Ark's pedals. Damn, that was an awesome trailer! Tons of little tidbits to talk about, and so many awesome moments. There were some downers, such as Cutter's new look, but overall, I'm excited for this game. My impressions from the beta so far have been largely positive, and the campaign footage has only further cemented in my mind how amazing this game will be. I'll be doing another video on Halo Wars 2 later this week after E3, talking about everything we know in terms of story, so hopefully we'll get some more details over the next few days so I'm not just repeating the same info I've presented here. Thanks for watching everyone, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.